morning and welcome back to Plant Vixen. Now today I'm going to be doing a um, plant haul rehab. So what happened is I went to a garage sale and this lady's moving back to her home country. I can't remember what it was she said it was. And she's selling everything. But when I was there I saw the state of some of her plants and they were, t oh there's so many pests on these plants that they need a rehab big big rehab so i th thought i would share my process with you folk today um considering we all get pests now what i have found so far is i have found mealy bug i have found scale i've found spider mite webs and a couple of fungus gnats and that is in seven plants in total um one of the pots was also covered in black mould, which suggests to me that uh, the lady that had these let them sit in water for a bit. They were always quite damp and humid um, in the base of the pot. So, um, yeah, so I've got three different types of Hoyas and two Tenanthes um, that I picked up for $5 each. So that's really exciting. $5 for all each, all of this. And I have got one that I've already started rehabbing. So this is a Hoya Bella that I got from there. And I have changed the soil, sprayed the roots with neem oil. I've got my neem. Um, sprayed my roots with that, sprayed the ends, wiped all the leaves down with a bit of soft cotton. So I just use scraps of cotton fabric and just wipe all the leaves down. Um, as I go and then I respray again with my neem oil just to make sure I've got all those last little remaining eggs coming out of there um, so this is what I've done I found so it was a not my pot but there's black mold all over this label so I've actually washed, washed it off the best I can I have taken the weed plant out of the pot and I'm actually going to throw this pot out because I don't want black mold in my house like this this is gone i I don't want it, so that's in my rubbish bin down there, so this is one of the hoyas I got. this is a red buttons she told me um so what I have done with this one is I have removed the soil, I have washed the the excess soil off with water, and I'm going to make up some. Neem oil. So I lay, label my neem oil bottle so anyone that decides to help me with my plants does not get the wrong thing. Um, so this is a 500ml bottle and on my neem oil it says 3 to 5ml per litre of water. So what I'm going to do, give it a shake, so, so per litre 3 to 5ml so I'm going to go for two millimetres, uh, two mil, this is like a little, oh, fish air. this is like a little baby, um, uh, syringe. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill it up twice, I'm going to put two mil in this water, uh, in this 500 mil. So that's sort of one, and one more, two, and chuck it in there. So, I've got my two millimetres of neem oil in there. Put that on, because, oh, 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 that's sticky. Sorry about my sewing room. This is like my everything space in here, and it sort of works for me. Um, so, what I do with my neem oil is I will hold the stem, and I will spray the top sides, so I'll go away from my camera, the top sides, the roots, the undersides of the leaves like that then I'll get my wee bit of cotton and I will wipe the leaves down every single one I know it's tedious and I know it's a pain but you know I've got over a hundred plants so if I was to put these straight in one of my plant rooms I would have some serious serious pest problems all right so 
that is that one. And I've got a new pot here for this one, just red buttons. Um, one of these little biodegradable warehouse jobs, which is fantastic. And my new soil. So this is just a soil based mix um, with a bit of cocoa fiber. I'm just going to spoon a couple of bits into the bottom of there. Now, I don't like to have my hoyas in a dry mix because I tend to underwater quite a bit. So I find that if I put them in a, a moister mix, um, then I tend to not kill my plants because I'm a major underwaterer forgetful really probably like most of us so even I have um cacti and things even those I will still mix some soil base in with them just to keep them a bit moister for longer and give them a bit more of a chance with my underwatering all right so I've put some soil in there I'm just going to press it down gently not not firm because you want the roots to be able to move but not too light that the water just sucks throughout the bottom so fast. So I'll just put a wee bit more on there. Put it there. Alright. So, get that a wee tidy. A wee bit more. A wee bit more of a sprinkle. There. There. So now that one is rehabilitated. And what I will be doing is I will put this in my quarantine room so I have one room of the house that any plant that comes into my house will go into that room and that's where it will stay for two weeks I'll check it every day check for new diseases new pests new things coming through um, I should be all right now because the I've changed the soil which is where a lot of pests will breed so like your mealy bugs your scale and your fungus gnats will all get into that soil and same for the um, spider mite, like you'll get cobwebbing and stuff just in the top layer of the soil. So, one rehabbed plant. Oh, sorry, and after I've wiped the leaves, I'll just give it one more spray in the pot, weave it on the soil. Neem oil won't kill it, it's not a um, fungicide, it is a pesticide. Um, and it's also got fermented seaweed, so that's like a, a fertiliser. So you're not going to kill your plants by putting neem oil in your roots, on your plants. Um, I wash it I wash it off in a couple of days and give them another wipe down when I'm checking for new pests. And respray again, so like just like a double dose, just to make sure that if there were any eggs or anything in there that were still attached to the um, plant or the roots, if they've hatched, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill them before they infest again. Um, so yeah, I've got a couple more I'm going to rehabilitate. Um, so I've got two more bellas here that I was just not going to leave them there. So they have roots. But this soil is probably good soil. There's probably nothing wrong with it. But as I said before, the house had it, you know, I counted four on one of my plants that I bought. Four pests. That soil is going in my compost. I don't want it in my house. It will most likely carry more pests. So that one's gone. And I won't reuse this container. I will wash this out before I use it. 100% um, wash it out before I use it. So new container. And same thing, I'm just going to put some soil in the bottom. So new soil. Quite often people will say, do not repot them straight away, they will stress out. Well, these things were in a conservatory and there was no heating in there. A lot of things are like these tenanthes where the leaves are all curled, they're all brown. So I think whatever I'm doing is not actually going to hurt them to the extent that they were getting. So, here we go, I found some pests on here. So on this bit here, that is spider mite webs. It goes right up the, the leaf. And 
I also saw a melee on here as well. Where was it? There we go. And a wee melee bug in there. In that bit. So, wipe them off. Get them off there, because you do not want those pests. So, what I'm going to do now is get my neem oil, spray it again, and really, really douse it. Like, get it in there, get it in the cracks of the leaves. I usually let it drip, like it drips off for me. And then I'll go over it and give everything a scrub down. Like, I won't rub the roots, but I will definitely do the leaves and the trunks to make sure that I've got all these pests. I do not want them infestating my house. Um, where I got them from, there was actually a syngonium, a white butterfly syngonium on the floor. And I actually had to get in really close to see what this thing was, as it looked brown. And it was absolutely, every centimetre had at least three scale in it. So, I really want to make sure. I've had scale once on one plant, and um, the neem oil killed it. Um, I think it was the third dose I gave it, and I haven't seen anything since. So, I've wiped that. I'm going to put it in my wee pot, and hold it up. Just scoop my soil in like this. Ta -da. So I love my spoon. You'll see my spoon quite often. Um, it's rather just getting it under my nails. I know we all have grubby nails. We're all gardeners. There's no way that our hands are always going to be clean, or our fingernails for that matter. Alright, so that's a second plant rehab. I'm just going to have one more spray on the top just to make sure that that is really going to survive. Um, yeah, so that one. Now these um, Tenanthes. So this one here, I don't know if we can, I might, might be able to get it in there. There is something growing there. That is rotten and that is growing. And I do not like the look of it. So, get my waste bucket. And just going to knock it out. Knock all the soil out. So there's some really good roots on this tenancy. But there is a lot of pests in that pot. Like I, I can see it just by looking in the pot. There is a lot of pests in there. Um, so I am glad I did that. So now what I'm going to do is, I actually think I'm going to take this through to my other room, and I'll do the other one at the same time. So I've got two tenanthes. Take the soil out, throw it out. Um, let me pop right in there. Alright, so I'm just going to go and wash off these roots, wash all the soil off, just in case there's something inside that soil. I want it gone. I want it gone. So I'll be back in a minute. Right, so what I've done is I've washed the dirt off and I'm glad I did because I found a little pocket of um, scale eggs. So I washed them out really, really well and I'm happy that I can say the roots are now clean. But what I am going to do anyway is get my neem oil and just douse it. That's absolutely douse it in neem oil. Um, I'll probably cut some of the leaves off this one because they're, they're brown, they're curled. It doesn't need to try and pump energy into those leaves that are already dying. Um, don't be afraid to cut your plants. Um, some of them, some plants, I try and only take about 30% at a time. All right, so here I found some major scale on this plant. Major scale. Well, these are big puppies. Where did I see them here? So here is scale. One, two, three. So we're going to get those off for a start. I don't want them. Goodbye, scale. All right. So what I might do is I'm just going to trim the horrible leaves off, the little tiny horrible. I'm only going to take 30% though of my plant and 
chomp in there. Oh, I think I need to tighten those. One moment. I'll get my tools. And I always have a toolbox available. Um, where on earth in the world did I put it? I'll just tighten these up so they cut for me. Here we go. I'm just going to take that leaf off. It's not a happy leaf, neither is this one. And that would be 30% of that plant. And the same for this one. So I've got that leaf there can go. Cut off. There we go. Um, this leaf here can go. It's only a, oh, that looks like a new one. No, I don't want to cut that. But it looks so terrible. This poor plant. That one there can come off. So we'll take that. Well, I'll take it right up at the leaf tip. So that plant already looks a lot healthier than what it was. So now I am going to plant that in my little pot. Uh, actually, I might use a green pot. A green pot. So I'll put a wee bit in the. Actually, no, I will change it again. I'll go upper size. Next size up. Just put some soil in the bottom of here. Like so. And I get my tenanthes. I'm just going to group them together so they sort of look nice. Feed the roots in gently. Like so. I'm just going to look like a nice full tenanthe plant now. So, let me get my spoon and scoop. Ah, uh, I need more. I need more. Oh, you can't see me. I'm just putting more. I, I have a bucket. Rather than sticking my arm in a bag all the time, I have a bucket that I keep my soil in. It makes it easy peasy. Alright, so let's group them together again and scoop some of the soil in. Um, I'll probably fertilise these in a week just to give them a bit of extra oomph because I don't have any fertiliser in my soil bags. So, and push it down. So already this plant is starting to look so lush in comparison to what it looked like five minutes ago. Um, you know, take the disease off, you know, cut your disease off. Um, wash the disease away, take the dead ends off and you will end up with a really good looking plant. And a bit of care and love in the rehab room and they will be right. So we have more soil in there and just press it down firmly, not dense but firm, just so that there's no ear pockets left in your soil. The big bubble under here. A bit more. And the other thing I might do is just trim the brown ends off. Um, it's not going to hurt the plant at all, but it's just going to make it look a hang of a lot better. Alright, I'll put my finger in the middle and tuck that in. Alright, so my scissors is somewhere. Um, here we go. Alright, so. Some of these ends are horrible, and I'm just going to cut them off. They don't need to be there, so away it goes. Like so. Now, I know some of the leaves are still curled up, and I think that's part of its rehab process of heal and repair. And I'm not too experienced in tenanthes. I've got a little bit, but not too much. Um, I can look after a Calathea, Stramanthe, so I'm sure I can look after a Sure we can be friends, mate. Alright, so, here is my rehabbed plant. I'm actually really considering chopping one this off, chopping them off. So that's the last one on that stalk, I have to leave that. I will leave those rolled, rolled leaves for now, see how they come out in the next week or so, they might come out nice, 
they might not who knows I can cut them off um, one of my stalks in here this one here has only got that one leaf on it that one curled leaf so I'm actually going to leave that um, as is because I would like it to have a chance I've taken off 30% give it a chance to grow um, so I've got another Hoya Bella I need to do and this Hoya here now I don't actually know the name of this she told me it is not a Carnosa and it has pink flowers I don't know what on earth it is there's no oh, oh there's a Mealy there's a Mealy right there look at this we're courting, we're courting good, can I get, can you zoom in on that, zoom in on that, uh, no I can't zoom in on that mealy bug, um, but you're gonna die, today is the day you die, goodbye mealy bug, another one there, so yeah these things, these things are really bad, so same with this one. I'm going to dump the old soil because I do not want those pests and infestations. That's gone. Right. Oh, that smells like rot. This thing's had root rot. It really has had root rot, this one. Right, I'm just going to go and wash this out, check these roots over, wash off those mealy bugs, and I'll be back in a second. Hang on. So I got rid of the mealy bugs, so I've washed it under the tap. Um, I didn't use cold water, I made it slightly warm and rinsed off everything. Um, you can see there has been a wee bit of root rot, probably from the early roots, but it has come right, but I could smell it in the soil. It was rank smelling. So let's give this a real heavy hit, because I did find mealy. I hate mealy bugs. I'm just doing it away from my camera. And away from my fabric. Mm -hmm. Alright, so this puppy here, I'll just grab another container. Like this. And I'll put some, I'll get up there, some soil. So if you know what this Hoyer is that I'm doing now, uh, please let me know. I, don't, I have no idea. Um, it has pink. Um, pink flowers apparently and the leaves are very long like they are very very long with quite a splash in them like a real big splash in them so if you know what it is comment below let me know because I have no idea I love my Hoyas this would be my 13th Hoya 12th or 13th I don't know I'm losing count so if you know what it is please let me know Alright, so I'll just sit that there and I will spoon my soil in. Let's give it a real good rehab. So you may think it's a um, quite a waste of soil, but what I do is I put it into my compost heap and let it come away from there. Let's get those in. Move your left knee there. There we go, now people can see. I like this leaf, it's got beautiful variegations. Here's my wee boy. Hi, George. I want <laughs> Sorry, he wants his tally. And I said I'll get it in a minute. Alright, so I just put some more soil in here. George, hold on. Right, sorry about that. That's four year olds for you. Hashtag solo mum life. <laughs> oh, I hate hashtags. Right, so just tucking the soil in around here. Making it firm, but not um, firm, but not too dense, because I want that water moisture to water flow through. There we go. Oh, I've got a peduncle coming. Peduncle. Right, so just pushing it around in there, lifting those leaves up, not. Try and don't, don't move them too much because Hoya leaves do tend to snap off easily. Alright, let's put you in there. Last wee bit there. There. Alright, here we go. 
right, so that is this Hoya. Let's get some dirt off these leaves. Because I don't like dirty leaves. I don't like dirty leaves. Right, so I'm just going to respray this again just to give it an extra. Because I definitely saw mealy bugs on this puppy. And I think they, mealy bugs, are worse than scale in my eyes. I hate mealies. Alright, so here is this unknown Hoya. But here, it's got a peduncle coming in down here, and two more here. Three peduncles coming in. So this is going to be a big, beautiful, luscious plant. I can't wait to see the flower and find out what it is. So yeah, so that's that's that for today. It's my plant rehab tutorial of how I rehab plants. Now all of these plants will go into a quarantine room, as I said earlier. Um, in two days time, I'll wash this neem oil off, um, just to sprinkle it under the shower and respray, leave it for another two or three days and go again um, just to get rid of all of the pests that were persistent in these plants um, so yeah, I hope you folk enjoyed my rehab video on what I do I will go and water these now with some not lukewarm but not freezing cold water and I'm going to distill it a wee bit um, I've actually got some in a jug that I might put in the microwave for 10 seconds just to bring the warmth up. Just a wee bit of warmth because I've shocked these plants. These plants are most likely going to sulk, especially this tenanthi will sulk because I've stripped it right back, right back to its bones. So it will sulk and then it will come away and it will be beautiful, hopefully. And these Hoyas, I should get on this one here that I did earlier. I have found a couple of flowers, uh, petals on there. Um, this one's going to get big. So, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you could please press the subscribe button. I think it might be there somewhere. Please subscribe to my channel. I've got lots more coming. Um, I want to do a full Hoya, Hoya video. Hoya care. Hoya show off. I think that might be next this afternoon, maybe. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy, and we'll see you next time. Ciao.